it's June 23rd, 2016. We just uh, received two inches of rain and it came fast and hard. Just about all the bunkers have been washed out to some extent. We're standing here on 12 where we took this large bunker last year and split it into thirds. You can see the fabric here where we had a little bit of washout. So this is the same root zone bunker sand that we used 16 years ago. And uh, we're testing basically the erosion control underneath the sand. So we're now in the area where the capillary concrete, it looks like some movement there. We'll walk up there a little closer in a minute. There's the capillary concrete's there and then we're into the billy bunker area here. So the billy bunker looks like it performed at a higher level. We didn't, um, we didn't uh, get any movement whatsoever here. <clears throat> the capillary concrete did pretty well in fairness. This is a little bit of a steeper slope, but you can see we got a little bit of sloughing of the sand. Uh, you can see the exposed um, capillary concrete there and a few areas here as well. Now in fairness, because we're using this local sand, that if we put four inches of sand on top of this treatment, which is what they want, they meaning capillary concrete and definitely the billy bunker, they want four inches of any sand that you use on top of their, of their material. Uh, we can't maintain that type of depth with this sand. That sand would be too soft. And you'd get balls hanging up with some fried egg lies up there on those slopes. So we only put really only like one to two inches of sand, just a skim coat. And, uh, and maintain about six inch depth down at the bottom where you, the golfer plays from. So here you can see again, this gives you an idea of how much sand we tend to have on the lip there. And you can see the fabric exposed. <coughs> um, this is how we treated our bunkers all 16 years ago, the fabric and the sand. And honestly, under most situations, it works pretty well. But clearly this tells you that it's not, it doesn't meet the level of standards that the um, capillary concrete or the billy bunker provides. So this was a good test that tells us <clears throat> the extent of their, um, their effectiveness in maintaining the sand in place on these heavily flashed bunkers. Now we'll go take a quick look at a few others out on the golf course. So we were just over on the green side bunker there on the left of 12 green. This is the bunker just to the right of the green, short of the, short of the green itself. And you can see, obviously, lots of standing water. Um, this is, these are the rain events that really demonstrate the, um, the aging of our bunkers. You know, our bunkers, I think, when we have full control of the water, performs pretty well at least for a hazard, but when you get a rain event of two inches like we just got, or even in, you know half of that would show a similar result actually. It seems like our capacity is about an inch. Anything more than an inch, we start backing up the drainage here. The sand's gotten contaminated over those 16 years, and the fines have slowed down the water movement throughout the uh, profile, uh, preventing it or slowing it down and getting into the drainage system. So this is kind of like, this is the weather pattern that demonstrates the weak link on these bunkers. So one of the first things you gotta do, of course, in the bunkers that have the most water is to pump them dry. Eventually that water will go down, but it just takes way too long in some of these bunkers that are performing worse than others. You can see the extent of the erosion where Felix is there now. You can see how the turf kind of folds down into the bunker. That, um, that's a very difficult design to have and prevent erosion. So, um, you know, you try to do what you can to divert water from above the sand line away. And, um, but you know, you gotta roll some of, this, some of the sod down in on the, the way these bunkers are designed. So you kind of end up with this type of an erosion pattern that takes place. So we'll, with this rain event, we'll, we'll use up easily over 100 man hours to try to repair the washouts 
pump the bunkers and as you can see here a lot of it's hand work you just can't get around it we try to do what we can with the machine and the, and the plow but not only is it the hundreds of man hours to fix it that's a, the issue now you have all this newly disturbed sand you try to do the best you can to get a consistent depth and that's going to take a few times of raking and checking after they do the initial repair so what i'm getting at is sure it's going to be a couple days worth of work for the guys to get this done physically but it's going to take several more days for this area to settle back down and reach a level of playability that is more consistent like it was prior to the rain event um, so maintenance on bunkers is just off the charts it's uh it's really a high maintenance a feature on a golf course and uh in, in some cases as much as perhaps even putting greens. So here you're going to see how he's going to confirm the depth. You see he just poked the sand with, a, with the handle and he's trying to get, get him to understand what the depth needs to be. That's what they do. They use the back side of the brake handle, stab the soil and try to get down to the base. So you know, bunkers, it's a mess. It's just part of the gig. You can see again the fines here. Put, brush them aside and you can see the coarser sand, much like there are here.